Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So here's another deck profile for you guys today. This time it's on Dark Worlds. So Dark Worlds an interesting uh, deck right now because like, even though it is like really strong, it does have one severe weakness, which actually funny enough would be Kashtira because Kashtira like to banish everything and with Arise Heart, yeah, it's a one-sided macrocosmos. So, or at least, I, yeah, I think that's true, right? I don't remember, but anyway, yeah. Um, so I had to rebuild this strategy in a way to where I can kind of like be prepared for that matchup. But also had to prepare the side deck accordingly because, you know, we do have Bistials because this deck is purely dark. Uh, well, a majority of it, it's dark. And yeah, it's best just to, you know, have the right cards for the right uh, matchup. So, but yeah, I figured I'd share with you guys what I got this time around. It is a 40 card deck now, so I managed to bump it down quite a bit. And yeah, like you'll see what, what where I'm going with this in, with my strategy and all. So anyway, let's go and get started. All right, so starting off with the main deck playing three copies of Graffa. Uh, this is probably one of the best cards in the entire deck because A, it's not a hard ones per turn. In fact, none of the Dark Worlds are hard ones per turns with the exception of Genta, but we'll get to that momentarily. But um, yeah, you can special summon this card from your graveyard by returning one face up Dark World monster you control to the hand, except itself. If this card is discarded uh, to the graveyard by a card effect, you can target one card your opponent controls, destroy that target. So this is actually pretty good because again, the RO actually means to loop this around. Then if this card was discarded by your opponent's card effect, you can look at one random card in your opponent's hand. Then if it was a monster, you can special summon it to your side of the field. That rarely comes up, but if it does, you know, um, it's it's there when you need it. And plus it's pretty good against the mirror match, so yeah. Which for the record, the mirror matches are pretty hellish because, you know, uh, if you, unless you're going second, you're probably gonna, you're, you're gonna have a rough time. But anyway, moving on. I'm running three copies of Rainbow over King of Dark World. So what this does is that if this card is um, you can special summon this card, kind of the same clause as Graffa, only this time you have to return a level 7 or lower Dark World monster you control. Which, honestly, it is pretty simple to do that anyway. If this card is discarded to the graveyard by a card effect, you can add a level 5 or higher Dark World monster, so it's a good way to get Graffa or even Silva, because Silva is really good. And also, uh, if this card is discarded by your hand to your, uh, by an opponent's card effect, you can special summon one level 4 or lower Dark World monster from your deck or your graveyard to either field, so not too bad. Next, three copies of Genta. This was actually in the structure deck. Uh, you can discard this card to search out a uh, the Gates of the Dark World. And if this card is banished, you can special summon this card. Of course, you can only special summon this card once per turn. So, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. But, yeah, like it says, you can only special summon Genta once per turn. Next, three copies of Snow. Now, people get confused with Snow's text because it is pretty convoluted. But, basically, when Snow is discarded, you can search a Dark World card. And if it's discarded by an opponent's card effect, you can target one monster in your opponent's graveyard, special summon that target in face-up defense position. So that's how snow generally works. So just be sure, just remember, like the effect, the, the effect to search, that is the default effect. And the uh, the effect to special summon from grave, that one is uh, done by your opponent's card effect. All right. So for the one ofs, I am running one copy of Silva. I was running two at first, but. I bumped it down to one, and, and this is only because I want to. I wanted to run a couple more level fours, to uh, to go into some rank four place, which we'll get to later on. But you'll see where I'm going with that. Uh, brought in beige. Beige is actually not too bad because, like, if it's discarded, you can special summon it. And again, there are kind of ways to loop this and Silva's effect over and over again. So, yeah, it's pretty nice. And of course, once you really, if it's discarded, it goes to your opponent's side of the graveyard, and then it triggers the effect where I have to discard a card thus enabling the secondary effects of either one of my Dark World cards, so that's pretty good. A uh, new card to my deck, which honestly might as well just be a Dark World monster. Uh, two copies of Zalamander Catalyzer. I cannot believe I didn't run this the first time, because I have opened quite a bit of Darkwing Blast. And yeah, I didn't realize this card even existed. So you can reveal this card and one Fiend monster in your hand, special summon one of them, discard the other. And keep in mind, discarding is not cost, so you can still trigger more effects this way. When a monster is destroyed by battle involving your fiend monster, while this card is in your graveyard, you can add this card to your hand. So it basically lets you, uh, lets you recycle it. And of course, you can only use uh, each effect of Zalamander Catalyzer once per turn. So that's actually pretty good support for Dark Worlds, I'm not going to lie. It is a fiend monster. It's fire, though, but still pretty damn good. So, and it actually just adds more attribute variety, so that way you don't have to worry about the bestials banishing your main key ones, right? So, yeah. All right, so that rounds up the Dark Worlds themselves. Um, I am still running a danger package, but it's a little, I decided to cut down on the dangers just a little bit more. Again, I needed to make room for other cards, but, um, starting off with 
two copies of Danger Nessie, probably the best uh, of the dangers, just because, you know, it searches out anything. Uh, two Bigfoot for monster removal. Uh, one Thunderbird, you know, for spell and trap removal. And, of course, one of each of the other ones that you'll probably want to use the most. One Chupacabra, one Jackalope, and one Suchinoko. They're just great for Link material mostly, but the fact that Chupacabra is also a level 4 monster too, it just helps for rank 4 plays. And just to get this one out of the way, I'm still running one copy of Zephyros. You know, why not, right? And that pretty much rounds out our monsters. No hand trust because most likely they're going to get discarded if you activate the dangers, so that's the whole reason why I'm not running too many of them. Actually, I'm not really running any of them at all. But uh, moving on to spells already. Uh, my new tech card for, for my main deck, I'm running three copies of Dark Ruler No More. Not only is this good against the uh, Cash Terror matchup, but it's just good, good against anything, really. Especially like Branded, you know, they set up on like their Mirror Jade and the uh, and the, uh, the new Fusion Monsters. You definitely want to stop them from going off. This is pretty good in Sprites because I think they can still make totally awesome from what I've heard. So yeah, Dark Ruler No More is definitely a card that can come in clutch. And again, it's just a great tool going second, because like if you lose the dice roll, at least you have a card that can help you, you know, just to prepare certain against certain matchups, right? Uh, three gates of the dark world. You definitely want to set this up as quickly as possible, because like this gets you off to the races. It's not a hard once per turn, so you can activate multiple copies and use their effects each once per turn each. And again, they're soft once per turn, so yeah, you can kind of like use them as many times as you want until you run out of copies. Uh, run a bunch of one of spells from here on out. Um, decided to bump Dark World Ascension to one copy simply because uh, not only is it searchable, but it's also recyclable too, so it's not too hard. Uh, one Dark World Puppetry, one Archives, uh, Card Destruction, you know, just so I can get some hand knowledge. Pot of Errors, you know, it, it comes in clutch whenever it needs to. Uh, one Beginning of the End, uh, one copy of uh, Danger Response Team, so another piece of removal right here, just to bounce back on your dangers and a monster your opponent controls. Uh, and lastly, one copy of Dark World Punishment as my only trap. It's just a good counter trap overall. And that pretty much rounds out our, our main deck. All right, extra deck. I did have to change it up a little bit, but I am still running two copies of the new Graph of Fusion, just because, you know, like if I lose one, at least I have a way to get another one out, especially because Dark World Ascension recycles itself. So yeah, it's pretty strong. So basically the fact that it alternates an effect where your opponent has to discard a card, yeah, that's that's pretty nice. It also brings out the original Grapha too, so why not? Uh, for Lynx, running one copy of Muckcracker from the Underworld, this card's also pretty nice, um, especially because it's a Monster Reborn and it also discards, not costs, so you can trigger more Dark World effects, but it does lock you into Fiend, so just bear that in mind. So I would recommend you getting your whole setup going first before you go before you resolve this card's effect. Decided to bring in Dark and cut Cross Sheet because, yeah, Dark is just a little bit better because, again, this is primarily against the uh, Branded and Bestial uh, matchup because they do run a bunch of Dark, so just having that extra monster could be key. Uh, let's see what else we got here. I got uh, IP Mascarena still. Uh, one Nightmare Unicorn. Decided to cut Phoenix just because I did. I figured I had plenty of removal already at this point on. Decided to bring in Sorry Just Skuldra just for more draw power because it is pretty easy to get four different monsters of different names. And, yeah, the fact that it helps you fix up your hand, it's not too bad. Uh, one Appaloosa. One Axis Code. Uh, one Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, we also have, um, for Rank Force, got Baguska. Uh, now, Baguska is just, like, generically good because it's basically a two-turn skill drain as long as he's in defense mode. So, yeah, that effect could come up quite a bit. So, yeah. And, of course, one Abyss Dweller. Still running Dingirisu just because, you know, it is non-targeting, non-destructive removal. Decided to add in Hope Harbinger and cut the uh, Spriggan's rank 8 monster. Just because uh, this card is a spell negator and gets to add materials to its to its to uh, to what it already has. And plus it's just more fuel for Hidden Arsenal Zeus. And yep, that pretty much rounds up our extra deck. Now the side deck I had a trickier time of deciding what I wanted to go with. But I think I finally figured out... How I wanted to go about it so for sure three copies of Lava Golem this is primarily key for uh for any deck that has a big board so cash branded even sprites and the fact that it's not technically once per turn to special summon this card so yeah Lava Golem is pretty clutch I'm running three copies of Chaos Hunter this is primarily for bestials only so any deck that runs bestials this is like the perfect counter to that so that way they don't start banishing out your monsters and they'll be forced to banish their own so yeah Chaos Hunter I thought was a pretty good choice 
three lightning storm, you know, just for like back row or monster removal. Same thing with cosmic cyclone, just specifically for back row. And decided to stick to a uh, skill drain just because skill drain is such a crazy card. Because most of the, the uh, if not all the uh, dark worlds, they technically resolve into graveyards. So yeah, I figured that was like the best choice. So you can basically keep popping their cards while they're under skill drain. And yeah, it, it's pretty cool. But anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoy this and I will catch you guys again next time.